On this episode of Summer Scoop, we're actually on site at Gwinnett County Public Schools. They're actually one of our largest customers who really knows how to use My Payments Plus efficiently. Um, they're quite large as well. They have over 170,000 students and over 140 sites. So if anybody knows how to work well with their bookkeepers, work well with staff, students, and parents, these are your gals. Um, so now I'm going to take it over to Chastity Eggleston, who's actually sitting down with Denise Moon and with Melissa Huffman, the Executive Director and Director for Gwinnett County Public Schools. Take it away, Chastity. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm here with the Gwinnett County Public Schools. We have Denise Moon, who is the Executive Director of Financial Operations here at Gwinnett County Public Schools. And we also have Melissa Huffman, who is the Director of Financial Operations here at Gwinnett County Public Schools. So thank you so much for joining me, lady. Absolutely. <laughs> Glad to be here. Yeah, so you guys, I'm just verifying that you guys started in 2010 with fees and activities. We did. You were a customer for much longer than that on the mill side, but just pulled in fees and activities in 2010. Um, so if you could tell me, Melissa, so how many bookkeepers are you guys managing here at Central Office? So, so currently we have 140 bookkeepers, and we have one bookkeeper at each location that's awesome. managing the software. Wow, so yes, it's a lot to yeah, handle. <laughs> um, and if you could tell me a little bit more about the beginning, when you guys were first starting out, you know, a lot of schools may have challenges in the beginning. If there's anything you can remember from that time? I can remember. I can remember <laughs> it well. Um, wow, in 2010, we really saw, we had a lot of schools wanting to use online payments, mm -hmm. and we were really trying to corral it and make sure that we were all using the same thing. So we were like, nobody use anything. We're going to go with my payments plus <laughs> since we're already using it for the for the meals. Um, so we started with AP exams in January, and that was kind of our pilot. And then we rolled out the fee and activities in the fall, um, and it went really well. We were heavily involved at that time, and we still are. That's kind of our our main thing with us is and call us control freaks or call us what you want. <laughs> but we found that's been a key to our success because we can keep some standards mm -hmm. with the schools. Um, we don't police them, but we definitely watch what they're doing. Um, but some of the challenges we had in the beginning was really trying to get the principals to buy in to the transaction fee because right. that was the biggest thing we heard was uh, we can't afford that transaction fee. Right. Um, we didn't want to pass it on to the parents because we felt like if we showed it to the parents, then the parents would opt not to pay that way. So we kind of hid the fee um, and made the schools absorb it. Okay. Um, but once we did the pilot, we had one of our um, schools that was very skeptical. And when they did the pilot, they collected more money that fall. They were, they were amazed. Wow. They collected more money than they had ever done in the past using My Payments wow. Plus. Awesome. So they were like our cheerleader. And from that point forward, it kind of, it's been a slow process, but slowly we've gotten schools on board. Now it's more of the demographics issue. We have a lot of free and reduced schools. We have a lot of um, Hispanic and right. other languages. Right. So trying to get that barrier to those parents, that's kind of where we are now. Right. Trying to, try to do that. Awesome. Well, that, that, that's all very great information for us to have too. Um, and so, Melissa, you know, now we see what the struggles were with you guys getting started. You know, how are you guys handling that now or today? So, so we're having to get creative in some of the things, like, like Denise mentioned, the demographics issues that, that, that we deal with. Uh, we've actually worked alongside with our um, newcomer school and our uh, international language centers, and we've actually taken a lot of our documents and translated them into our five primary languages that are spoken in our schools, wow. so that we've got documents that allow the parents to go out teach them how to sign up for My Payments Plus account, teach them how to review documents they've signed online, any of those types of things, mm -hmm. we've done that. One of the latest things we just did actually is, in, in creating those documents, we thought, okay, we're reaching these language groups, but then we find out there's a literacy issue okay. within those language groups. Okay. So what we've done now is we're starting to work on videos wow. that physically walk them through. They may be in English right now, but it's our first step that they can physically walk through, mm -hmm. set up a My Payments Plus account, or review documents as well. So we're working on, on that to you know, try to encourage the principals and the bookkeepers and so forth to get that information out to their parents wow. and just encourage the use of it. Yes. Oh, wow. Well, well, that's exactly yeah. why you guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when it comes to summer school, Melissa, I know you guys have a great process for how you handle it and manage it today. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Summer school is always fun. It's always exciting, but the big key to it is starting early. 
uh, we have a summer school coordinator that we work directly with every year, and she she puts together a um, course upload uh, sheet for us of every course with all the all the information. We upload that into My Payments Plus. We also work closely with her to uh, upload any discount codes that, that each of the locations, because we have multiple with, with as many students as we have, we have multiple locations for summer school. So we have discount codes that we create for that. And the last thing that we do is we actually create a counselor email group. That counselor email group, what it does is it allows students, as they register online, mm -hmm. it will email those counselors so that they can approve the courses for those students. Yeah. So it becomes a seamless you know, registration process for them. Of course, we encourage the students to register online, but we also have a walk-up registration night. Um, but even though it's a walk-up registration, they still have to come and, and sign up online. Nice. So, so that it keeps everyone registered in the same, you know, this, online. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, it also allows that counselor email approval process right. to happen as well. Right. So, so doing all that together, it really makes it a seamless process for our students, mm -hmm. and it keeps everything for the counselor's approval and uh, and for the summer school coordinator as well. Very nice. Uh, that's the perfect way to handle it. <laughs> and so, I mean, just like you guys have summer school, you also have orientations that you use and utilize very heavily as well and make things a whole lot easier for your parents and your bookkeepers. So if you could tell us a little bit about that, Denise. I can. Um, gosh, we've been using orientation agreements six or seven years, ever since you guys created them. Um, we're trying to get away from doing the paper, just like we don't want cash payments in the right. schools. We also are trying to do a lot of the electronic signatures. So we put our school handbooks, our, our individual school handbooks, they'll put out there. We also put out our um, GCPS handbook that all parents okay. are required to read. Um, we put that out there. We put a lot of the media agreements. Um, our AKS booklets we put out there for each of the schools and what's neat about those is those are by grade level our AKS booklets are okay. so when you do orientation agreements you can limit what they see so okay. we can limit it by grade level so that Great. works really well and then the big push we had last year which is this will be our first year really doing it right last year we rolled out doing our title one compacts okay. if you're a title one school you're required to give parents um, certain information and parents actually have to look at it and they have to sign off mm -hmm. and you have to prove that parents have seen those documents. So last year, kind of last minute, we added those to orientation agreements. Mm -hmm. Worked pretty well. This year we're ready. We've got all our links set up. So okay. um, we're working with the Title I office and I think it's going to work really well um, because the other good thing is you guys have added on the orientation agreements when we go in, you can actually go in if a parent turns in a paper form, you can mark oh, yes. it as being submitted. Yes, yes. Well, we can now actually, you guys fixed it where we can mark multiple documents yeah, at one time. Save some time. It will save them so much time, <laughs> especially for the Title I office, because I believe those schools are actually managing those mm -hmm. within My Payments Plus. So if they have 10 documents submitted by 10 different parents, they can check them all off at one time, right. make it so much easier on them. So it's really helped us with our printing costs, getting a lot of the booklets out of the schools, mm -hmm. getting the, the paper costs down, and also getting the parents and the documents right at their hands so we right. can look at it. Right, yeah. that's, that's great. That's great. Yeah, and then they have another reason to go to the site right. as well. Right. So, so make all the other fees and activities easier. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so even, thank you so much, and even thinking of that, you know, what kind of, well, so I'm going to ask you this one, yeah. what kind of fees and activities do you see, like in the middle, elementary, high, um, the differences that you see that so, people are posting? So, so, so obviously, when you, when you look at elementary, it's definitely different from, from a high school. Right. Uh, one of the things, the typical things we see in an elementary school, obviously, are your, your typical contributions. So you're going to see your contributions for supplies or clinics. You'll see those in the high school and the middle schools as well. But the elementary schools, they really get into using it, especially like for field trips. Mm -hmm. field, field trips, if, if you think about this, and you can really encourage your teachers and get them on board and get your principals on board for using it for, for that because it eliminates those teachers from taking away, yes. from collecting money in the classroom, for collecting all the paper permission forms, finding out who needs a turkey sandwich versus a ham sandwich, <laughs> you, know, or, you know, or something right. for lunch. Right. It allows them to go online and be able to do that all there. Um, so that just, that totally frees that up. Mm -hmm. Not only that, from an audit standpoint, it also reduces, you know, the room for error. Right. Uh, when you have your teachers taking up cash and receipt books and, and mm -hmm. so forth, everything's done online, so it, re it reduces your audit error. So that's a win-win there. Um, you also see things, a lot of your spirit wear, you'll see your PTA memberships. Um, anything that's collected at the school, you'll see that there. We also manage our textbook and our um, library book fees. So any missing textbooks or, or, you know, or damaged textbooks or library books, those we, we have it set so that they feed into My Payments Plus right. so that they can pay for those online as well. 
So, and, and that goes from elementary to high school. Mm -hmm. um, so, so those are covered. High school, when you get into those, of course, you're starting to see things, more clubs and activities, um, you know, associated with that. You get some of your larger trips, like your DECA trips, your band trips, and so forth. So you'll see that type of information. You know, parking fees, more athletic type uh, things that are in there. So, um, so a variety of things, but there's definitely, you know, high usage on both ends. Right, right. And just, yeah, definitely making that process easier with it being online too. So exactly. the fact that you guys are offering so many things online speaks to, you know, your parents are, are using it too. So they're, they're, they're enjoying it. And I think that I think one of the keys too for the fee and activities, especially what well, the activities, is the forms that we can add to the activities right, yes. for collecting that field trip information. Right. We have so many forms that we've created. I mean, <laughs> the the lady that works on our that does our forms within financial operations has done so many forms. I bet yeah. she's created I don't even, I couldn't even count, I mean, there's just tons of forms. Mm -hmm. But for collecting that information from parents, it really makes it so much easier for the teachers and for the schools to gather the information yes. and sit down with these papers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's great. It does and great. it's great that My Payments has the option to be able to email those rosters and, and the responses right. for those forms to those to those student sponsors. Right. So to the teachers who are sponsoring each activity or, or club or whatever, they can receive those either on a daily or a weekly basis. Awesome. So they can keep up with the information as it's coming in. Makes it easy yes. for their t-shirt orders. All they have to do is download the report, and they instantly got what they need to order yes. for t-shirts. Awesome. That's great. That's, that's really awesome. We are really truly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate that. We are too. So <laughs> we want you know everyone to use it, and we want it to be helpful to you all. We mm -hmm. want it to be easier for your parents. Um, I used to be a teacher before, so we don't want you mm -hmm. collecting money in the classroom. Right. The exactly. teacher's collecting it. Um, but thank you so much for that. And the last question that I have is the best practices. So we have a lot of districts that are large that are thinking about using My Payments Plus, or maybe they've already started using it, but they're not really utilizing it to their potential. Um, so what would you say, and I'll start with you, Denise, what would you say to those districts that, you know, the best practices, things that you would say help to encourage the usage of My Payments Plus? Um, probably the biggest thing, one of the biggest things that I tell principals and um, bookkeepers is communicate with your parents. Communicate with them if you're, if, when you get ready to do it, mm -hmm. make sure you give them enough advance notice, give them fair warning, give them enough information they know how to get there. Um, and then, I don't want to say make it difficult, but make it harder for parents to pay with cash. Tell them, get your principal behind it to say, this is what we're doing, we're going to go cashless because we want to get the cash out of the schools. If you get your principal behind it, it makes it a whole lot easier. And we have we have schools that just, I mean, we had one school in the very beginning that they took up $6 in cash, wow. like the second year we did My Payments Plus. Wow. Yeah, and, it was, and <laughs> they, it, was, it was awesome. Yeah, but that's because the principal got behind right. it and the school got right. behind it. So it really is a matter of getting out there and pushing it and communicating with parents and just letting them know they'll get in there and use it once they see how easy it is right. and understand the program that's that's, that's key it really yeah. is thank you and what about you Melissa? I, I think even even from the flip side as far as from the parents is is providing support to our to our internal customers mm -hmm. i think we, we do a lot of training with our bookkeepers and then we offer multiple times throughout the year mm -hmm. in, you know administrative fee manager type training mm -hmm and really work with them on making sure they fully understand you know, how to use the system, right. as well as we have one and a half people, uh, full-time people, uh, who actually support My Payments Plus. We have, we have a person who's completely dedicated to support Mailbox, and we have another person who's completely dedicated now to the, um, to the um, whole product. Okay. So they're going to be managing all of these data uploads. They're going to be managing the relationship you know, with Horizon and so right. forth. And so I think it's important that, that we, we provide our internal training right. and support and like we mentioned earlier, you know, we, we give them all the tools and everything that they need, and we, and we, we give them the guidelines yes. and kind of give them, you know, a structure, but we're not policing them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, at, from a central office standpoint, we're kind of, you know, we're, we're kind of looking over their shoulder right. just to kind of make sure that we keep the structure the same so that we're consistent, right. you know, out, out to the community. Right, and that makes it easier for them, Absolutely. you know, in, in the long run. And making it easy so the parents can actually see everything's in order. Mm -hmm. We know exactly where to look. We're not looking for a field trip over here in orientations or anything, you know, right. everything's right. together.